The following is a conversation between His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and a group of professors, recorded June 24, 1975, in Los Angeles. If we take care of the circumstances, that is being done by the cats and dogs and hogs, everyone. Where to find rules, uh, uh, where to find sex, where to find a shelter for sleeping, and how to defend. These circumstances are understood by the animals. There is no need of education. Just like this morning I pointed out, the bird is <coughs> catching a small fish. He knows where to find out is it a... <coughs> and that you cannot do. You also eat fish, but you jump over and take a fish. You cannot do that. But he can do it. He is more expert than you. <laughs> yes. In the troubled water he is flying, he can see a small fish and immediately pick it. Can you do that? He is more advanced in civilization. <laughs> He knows his techniques. He is greater scientist than you. <laughs> you cannot do this. A vulture goes seven miles up and he can see where is a dead body. So even amongst the animals there are many expert scientists than our so-called scientists. But what that science will help? This, that science may help how to eat, how to sleep, how to have sex, that's all. And that is being done by the animals. It doesn't require any advanced scientific knowledge. Real scientific knowledge is who is God to know. That is meant for human beings. Not this, what to find out a peace, very expert. That is being done by a bard. Where is the use of scientists and philosophers? Therefore, in the Vedanta Sutra, the indication is there that now you have got this human form of life, find out where is God. That is the answer. That we have set aside. That we do not touch. That we have left to the sentimentalist. Why does the scientist do not take up this work very seriously? If there is God, where he is? Who is God? That is Krishna consciousness moment. Dhata Brahma Jigyana. So you are all learned scholars, you join this movement and help us to keep people in darkness. That is not advancement of education. And education does not mean how to find out to fish expertly. And that is being done by the birds. Education means to solve the problem of life. And what is the real problem? Birth, death, old age and disease. That is real problem. So where is the uh, remedy for this birth, death, old age and disease? That is the instruction in the Bhagavad-gītā. Janmamittu jarabhyadi dukkha dhushanu darsha. We are trying, our struggle for existence means we are trying to mitigate how to avoid distress. We want happiness. And Krishna presents that here is your distress, <coughs> that you have to die. What you have done for this? 
here is your little real distress. He might have taken your birth in rich American nationality, you might have very good skyscraper building and very, very nice motor cars, but you will be kicked out at any moment, sir. What you have done for this? That you will be insured for all this enjoyment. Where is that insurance? You are so busy in these affairs, but where is your insurance that you will be allowed to enjoy this? This is intelligence. He will be kicked out at any moment. When all your labor is spoiled. Therefore Krishna present this problem first. Janma Mattu Jarabhadi Dukha Dushanu Dasha. We are looking after happiness. But we must find out where is permanent happiness. That is intelligence. Not that I created a circumstance where I am happy for some years and then get kicked off. Why don't you touch this problem first? Then you are scientist, then you are philosopher. Then I think I saw you. Yes. Sometimes we in met before Det- I, we inter- I interviewed you yes. several years ago. Yes. And, uh, this is Dr. John Orr. He is the chairman of the religion department at the University of Southern California. Oh. And he has written uh, a few books called The Radical Suburb and Ethical Choice. And he's, uh, his academic interest is in ethics and uh, religion and culture and education and public policy. And this is Dr. Crossley back here, also from the University of Southern California. He has a doctor of theology, and he is uh, interested in modern theology. He's written many articles on modern theologians. Then why modern theology? (laughs) (laughs) Is God modern? No, but one can't do all theologians. Eh? One can't do every theologian. No. Theo means God, is it not? And theology means science of God. So what is that science? You are trying to understand God or you know God, you are going to abide by God's dictation. First of all, two things. You do not know God. You are trying to find out God. I think this is not theology, it is theosophy. Those who are trying to find out God by speculation, they are theosophists. And theologist means one who knows God and abides by His order. Just like we know government and we accept the government's law and abide by it. That is good citizenship. And those who have no government, they are trying to find out some good system of government. And that is another thing. So what is your position? You know God or you are trying to find out God? What is the theological position? That is my question. It's both. Hmm? No, some, both cannot be. Some seek. No, both cannot be. That is illogical. If you know God, there is no use of finding God. 
to know I live with God. Is knowing the end of seeking? Oh, yes. You have heard by His love, that's all. You know your father, have heard by His love, that's all. Whatever father says, you have heard by. And if you do know who is your father, that is very difficult job. How, how do you find your father? By research? Do you find your father by research what? That is my question. Is it possible to find my father by research what? What is the answer? I think you, you know huh? your father. You know who he How is. How I know? Because you see him, you talk huh? to him. Huh? No. I, 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 but uh, what is the proof that he is my father? I, I see so many gentlemen. How I know who is my father? He tells you. Huh? He tells you you're his son. That, that means he, you accept anyone as God. He tells that I am God. But I accept anyone as father who tells me that I am his son because only one has ever no, told me that. No, that is not the way. Everyone will say, I am your father. He lets it. Everyone will say, I am your father. Will you accept everyone as your father? Then how do you accept the bona fide father? Foster fathers very often say huh? that they are the real. Foster fathers very often tell their foster children that they are the real fathers. We are not talking of foster, they are we are ca- talking of real father. How do you know your real father? You've grown up with him. Huh? You've known him since you were a little child. It's part of your consciousness. So if my consciousness is not right, then I may select the wrong father. Because you know he's your father, there's still more to know about him. There's right. more and it, it, more it, it to understand. The simple answer is when the mother sacrifices, he's your father. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to make research. That is, that is futile. By research, you cannot understand who is your real father. He can understand your real father only by the certificate of your mother. Therefore, our Vedic mantra says that religion and God cannot be manufactured by speculation. Achinta khaludi bhava datas tarki na jujayat. Just like this example, father. Father was existing before my birth. So after my birth, with limited knowledge, I make research who is my father. You will never find your father. But if you take the certificate of your father, that is good. Similarly, Achinta Khalidri Bhava, things which are beyond our conception. That cannot be established simply by argument, logic, so called science and philosophy. That is not the same example. By argument, logic, science, philosophy, we cannot ascertain who is your power. The only simple method and Authorized method is to ask mother, and if she says yes, he is there. Similarly, things which are beyond our conception, simply argument will be useless. Achin takkhaluji bhava natas tarkena ju. Tarka means argument. And another place it is said, Tarka argument is feedback. Tarka apartishya. By argument you cannot come to the right conclusion. You are you can argue in a way, I can argue 
and better way, and he can argue in better way. That is our decision. That is that will not happen. Tarka Pratishta Sutayo Bibhinna. If you study scriptures, so in the world there are many varieties of scriptures. There is Bible, there is Bhagavad Gita, there is Quran, there is Swan, so on. So which one is correct? That also you cannot decide. Sutayo Bibhinna. Naso Munit Jasa Matangna Bhinna. And if you consult philosophers, a scientist, every scientist, every philosopher differs from the other. Otherwise he cannot become a big scientist. He must give a different view, then he is big scientist. So Naso Munit Jasa Matangna Bhinna. Then where is the way to understand? The conclusion is Mahajana Jina Gata Sapantha. Mahajan, great personalities, recognize Acharya, what they say you follow. That is the best system. So anyone who is speaking about God with authority, take for example, Jesus Christ. He is speaking in the Western world. You accept him. We Indians, we accept Chaitanya or Ramana Jaja, Buddha Jaja. That is the way. That is the way. Because these Acharyas, these authorities, they are speaking about God. None of them is speaking that you become happy here. No. None of them. Either Christ or Chaitanya or Muhammad. Nobody else. So according to the time, circumstances, position, either you follow any one of them as it suits you, <coughs> or if you can make a comparative study, you follow the best one. So therefore our conclusion is Krishna is the best. He is God. Christ is Son of God. So we don't differ Son of God and God. That is all right. But when the Father is speaking personally, uh, He is speaking uh, what the Son has spoken, plus something, because He is more experienced. So take the father and follow him. That's all. Mama says he is servant of God. Christ says he is son of God. And Krishna says I am God. So where is the difference? The son will say the same thing, the servant will say the same thing, and the father also will say the same thing. So theology means to know God and abide by His order. That is my understanding. And theology does not mean to make research who is God. That is theosophy. So if you are theologians, then you must know what is God and abide by God. What do you think, Dr. Judah? Pardon? What do you think, this proposition? Yes, well, I think I think you're you're quite right. I think that that it is certainly in our day and age, many of us don't really know God. Then, then he's not theologist. We, he, he he's theosophist. We know we know about God, but we do not know God. I I would agree. That is theosophy. Theosophy is they they're thinking. There is something superior. But who is that superior? They are searching. 
the same thing. A, a, a boy, he knows I have a father. But who is my father? I don't know. And then you have to ask his father. Alone he cannot understand. So our proposition is that if you do not know God, and here is God, Krishna, why don't you accept it? You do not know, first of all. And if I present here is God, then why don't you accept it? What is the answer? We are presenting God, here is God. And big, big acharyas have accepted. Ramana Charya, Madhya Charya, Vishnu Swami, Lord Chaitanya, and our disciple succession, my Guru Maharaj, and I am preaching, he is God. I am not presenting a God uh, musical. I am presenting a God who is recognized. So why don't you accept? What is the dividend? I suppose one of the difficulties for certainly many in the older generation is that we we follow certain patterns of life and the <laughs> and uh, it is difficult to change. This is the pro great problem. Therefore, Krishna said, Sarva dharman paritajya mame kam sarva. You have to give up. That's right. If you are not prepared to give up, then you cannot accept God. I think you're being a little unfair to Dr. Crossley. Uh, I think what you say is true, that, uh, that it's the most important thing we can do is to seek and know God. But I, I don't think it's right to say that uh, it's a bad thing to study how other people or how no, man has... I don't has, say uh, bad thing. Yeah. I say if you're That's serious it, about God... Now, here is God. That's what a university, in part, is for, to study about how people have no, thought like, on different matters. I would say, if you are seeking after something, if you get that something, mm. why don't you accept? Do you believe that Christ said that Krishna was his father? The name may be different. It's mm -hmm. like, like in our country, we say, this flower, something, this has something come. Mm -hmm. But the subject matter must be the same. Mm -hmm. Name is not. You can say any difference, mm -hmm. as you understand. The God is one. God cannot be two. You may give him different names. That is different. But God is one. God cannot be two. We may assume Srila Prabhupada that God has innumerable names. Yeah. And uh, most of them not known to us. If we can say most about innumerable. Can, can you know from us? Sahasrana, eh? where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, Nam Nam Kari Bahuda Nija Sattva Shakti, Nam, the Nam and the person, name and the person. There are many, hundreds and thousands of names, and each name is as good as the person. Because it is absolute. There is no difference between the person and the person's name. 
If God is known by many different names, though, is it not possible then to to know God then in many different ways, in many different traditions? No. In fact, uh, you are the same person, either as professor in the university or at home before your wife. You are the same person. Your wife may address you in a different name, and the students may address you in a different name, but you are the same person. It's true. The, if the person is the same, the different some name does not change the circumstances. But there are many aspects of God. Huh? But there are many aspects of God, of Krishna. Yes, there is the aspect. There are, the aspects have been summarized that God is realized in three aspects. Uh, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaneti, Sarva. Impersonal Brahma, localized Paramatma, and personality of God. Just like this sun, this sun sign is also sun. But you cannot say that you are in sun. Can you say that? But you are sun sign. The sun sign is not different from the sun. Similarly, in the absolute truth, the first realization is Brahma, and the next realization is Paramatma, and the ultimate realization is Bhagavan. The subject matter is the same, but according to the degree of advancement, the realization is partial. <coughs> the subject matter is the same. Now you can study the sun sign, but it is not in your power to go to the sun planet and study what is actually. But because it is not in your power, it does not mean the sun planet is great. <coughs> You cannot go there. It is not in your power. You can simply study the sun sign. But that does not mean the sun glow is false or there is no subject matter of study. You cannot go there. In that illustration, is Krishna the sun it, shine or is Krishna, Krishna the is sun? Krishna is a person. God is ultimately a person. Then, by his uh, another potency, he is situated everywhere. Anantara Sang Paramanacha, he is situated within the atom also. That is called Paramatma, super soul. And he is situated in his impersonal, the whole material creation or any creation. The example is given just like fire. Fire is one place, but its, its heat and light is expanded to miles, just like the sun. It is a fire light. But heat and light is expanded throughout the universe. So similarly, God is one. And his energy is expanded everywhere. You can understand him by his energy. Just like the government, the president <coughs> is not here, but still we are under government. Who can deny that I am not under? And if you say, I do not see who is president, what is the government? That is not argument. You are. Simply you have to make your eyes to see how you are under Krishna. That is. But you are already. But then God in His essence is Atman, Brahman, not Krishna, is that what you're saying? God is three. I have already given you the example. 
the sun shines and sun glow and the deity within the sun glow. They are all one. It's still that difference. And we as human beings, are we part of are that too? Human in the trees, plants, everywhere. We are part and parcel of God. And how is Krishna different from us? He's not different. Because we cannot realize him with that thinking he's different from us. That is Maya. They like father and son, they are not different. But the son out of his foolishness is thinking father is different from him. When do you say though that in the case of of us that we are, as it were, Jiva Shakti, we are a marginal energy and so we do have, as it were, uh, that aspect of Krishna, but we also have in this in this world then the the, the Maya Shakti. We are the combination. Here in yeah. everyone is that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, find out this verse. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagat abhakta mohtina masthani sarvabhutani nahang tishu avastika. <coughs> Maya tatamidam sadbam. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina matstani sarva bhutani na chaham teshvavastitaha. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. But ultimately, there is no difference between Krishna's energy and Krishna. Whenever there is energy, just like electricity, everywhere there is. If you are expert, you can generate electricity anywhere. Is it possible to find Krishna in the Christian tradition or in yes. Islam? Oh, yes. Christians are seeking after God. You are going to the church. Oh, God, you accept. God has created everything. Yet also He says, everything is my energy. Where is the difference? The Christians describe Krishna in a different way, are they making that, mistakes? That is, uh, it's like the heat, mm -hmm. the question of energy, the heat, 93 million miles away from the sun, heat may be different, and in the sun globe the heat may be different, but the heat is there, mm -hmm. the light is there, the same thing. Heat and light is the same, but the degree a presentation of heat and light may be different. Is chanting absolutely necessary in the That knowing? is the easiest way of being directly in touch with God. Because God and God is in God's name, is absolute. So you are chanting the name of God means such in directly in touch with God. Why is that better than <coughs> Loving your fellow man and traditional bhakti marga. But you love your fellow man, but you don't love your fellow animal. You love man, but you send the animal to the slaughterhouse. That is your love. <coughs> and the soldiers into the battle. Huh? And the soldiers into the battle to be killed. Uh, now, first of all, study this man, then you go to soldiers. Uh, our love is limited. Uh, but if you love, just like this tree, there are many thousand leaves and flowers. So if you water to each of them, then it will occupy the whole your life. And if you are intelligent, just put water into the root, it will go away. 
And if you are not intelligent, you go on putting water, every leaf, every leaf. Your whole body requires food. That does not mean you have to supply food to the ears, to the eyes, to the nails, to the dekta, to the... No. Give food to the stomach. It will be this food. So Krishna says, maya tadadam sadvam, that we have already studied. So if you love Krishna, then your love will be deceived. If you don't love Krishna, and if you love somebody else, then somebody will cry that you do not love me. May I ask a question? First of all, try to understand this. I am just... Just like Krishna says, maya tatamidam sattvam. I am expanded by my energy everywhere. So everywhere how you can go? You love Krishna? And your love will go everywhere. You pay tax to the government, and the tax is distributed in so many departments. So it is not your business to go every department and pay tax. Pay to the treasury of the government, it will be distributed. This is intelligence. And if you say that why shall I pay to the treasury house? I shall pay to this department, that department, that department, that department. You can go on, but it will never be sufficient. Neither complete. So you may love humanity, but because you do not love Krishna, therefore do not love the cows, you send them to So your love will remain defective. It will never be complete. And if you love Krishna, then you love in the small ant. He'll not interest him to kill him with an ant. That is real love. I agree with you that we love very badly and we yes. slaughter the animals. So badly love is not love. But is the converse true, that we chant very well and that we can love Krishna even when we cannot love our fellow people? Yes. Chanting, you are also working. It is not that. You are simply sitting down and chanting. Because you are chanting, therefore you are loving everyone. That's a fact. These Hare Krishna chanters, they never agree to kill any animal, even a plant, because they know everything is part and parcel of God. Why unnecessarily one should be killed? That is love. Love means never killing? There are so many things. It is one of the items. Yes. Then uh, do you kill your own son? Why? Because you love him. Would you explain the other side of it? Uh, the uh, the fact that, of course, the Bhagavad Gita was has its setting on a battlefield in which. Krishna enjoins Arjuna to go out and uh, fight his kinsmen uh, because it is his duty as a kshatriya. Yeah. Because in the material world or the maintenance of equilibrium of the society, sometimes killing is necessary, just like fight, war. When the enemy has come to your country, you cannot see that you must fight. That does not mean that you, you are allowed to kill everyone as you like. That is, uh, in special circumstances, when fighting must be. 
that for the khatriyas are required to give protection. That the government is keeping military, police, soldiers. That does not mean government is after killing only. That department will be utilized when that is necessary. Not that government is meant for killing. Government has other departments also. But this is also maintained. If there is necessity, it should be utilized. So Krishna, when he is on the battlefield, that was a necessity. He has got two business. Pratranaya sadhuna vinasaya sadhuskita. Those are demands, those are disturbing elements. They should be killed. And those who are honest and peaceful, they should be maintained. But because it is material world, the world of duality, they are good and evil. So you have to cut down the evil. Sometimes force is required. So that is that that killing is not bad. When the enemy is aggressive and you are killing, that killing and poor animal who is supplying milk, you are drinking milk, your mother, and you are killing. This killing and that killing is not the same thing. According to Vedic civilization, the cow is to be given a special protection. Why? It is recommended for the cow. It does not say of other animals. And the animal killing is required, according to the Vedic civilization. Those who are meat eaters, they are allowed to kill some insignificant animal like deer, goat, pigs. It is for the animal eaters, not for all. And if one is bent upon, and there are persons, they want meat eating. So for them these unimportant animals are recommended. But cow is very important. You get from its milk so many nutritious food. So apart from religious sentiment, from uh, economic point of view, cow killing is not good. And from moral point of view, it is not good. Because you drink cow's milk, the cow is your mother. According to Vedic civilization, there are seven mothers. Adho, Mata, Guru, Patani, Brahmani, Rajapatrika, Dhenu, Dhatri, Tatha, Prithi, Sapta, Eti, Mata, Rishmita. Adho, Mata, real mother. And Guru, Patani, the wife of Guru, a teacher. She is also mother. The teacher is father. Adho, Mata, Guru, Patani, Brahmani, the wife of a Brahmana. She is mother. Adho Mata Guru Patni Brahma. Rajapatnika, the queen, the wife of the king, she is mother. And then cow is mother because you are drinking and milk. Adho Mata Guru Patni Brahma, Rajapatnika. Then Dhatri, nurse. Nurse is also mother because you suck the breast of the mother and nurse. Therefore, according to Vedic civilization, there are seven mothers. So you cannot kill your mother. That is not very good to love her. And who can deny the cow is not mother? Who has got this audacity? You are drinking mainly in the very morning.
Raya says, thou shalt not kill. Wholesale killing stops. And the Vedic literature is little liberal. It does not say, thou shalt not kill, but you shall not kill at least cow. But the wholesale stop is not possible. The Vedic wisdom knows that. But you shall not kill at least cow. That is civilization. Christians are maintaining thousands of slaughterhouses. It's a very good proposal. Are you saying that you should never kill a cow, but that you sometimes can kill a person? When you can give life, there is sometimes Cow sacrifice yoga. The cow sacrifice yoga means an old cow he sacrificed in the fire and by Vedic hymns he is given again new life. To test the potency of the Vedic mantra, an old cow he sacrificed and by mantra he is given again new life not for killing and eating. That was discussed between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chant Kazi, Mahavadana Magistrate. That is a different case. Uh, for meat eating, a cow should not be killed. This is not very good civilization. If you are, uh, you must eat meat, then you can kill other animals. <coughs> they, they, those Khatriyas, they, they are sometimes going to the forest, killing the deer. They are allowed because they have to learn how to kill. So by killing animals, they used to practice just like doctors, medical practitioners. They first of all fly that knife on the dead body and find out where are the knives, where are the not a living man. When they are fully practiced, then they are allowed to practice surgical operations. Similarly, kutriyas are meant for sometimes killing. It's like Arjuna, he's a kutriya. But Krishna is criticizing him that you are a kutriya. You have learned how to kill. And now you are hesitating. What is it now? So kutriyas are taught because they are rule over. <coughs> so he required uh, the demon and the culprit should immediately cut off his head. Beauty of the God. So all of a sudden you cannot do that. Just like in your country, a young man has never learned how to kill and he is drawn in the death boat. Come on, go and kill. What will do? He will hesitate. This is not part of system. If you want a khatriya, you must train them. You must train a class of men as brahmanas. You must train a class of men as khatri. <coughs> a class of men as agriculture and cow protector and balance of work. That is chatur 
ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय वैश्य शुभ क्षत्रिय एज ए प्रेसिडेंट एज ए सेक्रेटरी दे आर सिटिंग वेरी कंफर्टेबली एट आर होम एंड सम पुअर यंग मैन कमैंड गो एंड फाइट वट दे फाइट दे डाई दे He does not know how to fight. That energy is lacking. What he'll do there? Let me ask you. You, you seem to be saying, in several of your illustrations, that um, okay, to try to love is too much, but at least we can chant. To try to have a prohibition against killing. It's too much. Look what happens. We slaughter the animals. But to have a specific prohibition against killing a cow, that we can have. In other words, I hear you talking about a specific discipline that people can actually accomplish. Not kill a cow, chant. Yes, the Brahmanas. But every religion has that. Jews keep kosher. Apart from religion, it is social happy. It has nothing to do with religion, but it helps religion. I guess what it, I really want to know is, does it matter what the specific thing is, like not killing a cow, or like chanting, or are there many specific things that people can do for love of God and for <coughs> discipline yes. that will serve the same purpose? The only specific thing is you chant, then other things will automatically be revealed. The chanting is necessary. Yes, absolutely. Nothing else will will do as well. No, because at the present moment they are not practical. Suppose the meditation, it is not practical. Meditation is not practical. No. Srila Prabhupada, in our age, that is in the Kali Yuga, it is not. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. And it is practical. Even a small child can chant Hare Krishna. You see every day the small child is chanting and dancing without any training. Srila Prabhupada, the reason that meditation is not feasible now is because we are too much distracted in this age. Mind you, I'll meditate on, on my office work. When I close my eyes, I shall sleep, I'll say anything. Many. Old ladies meditate. मेडिटेशन इज डिस्क्राइड ज्ञानावस्थित तदगति न मनुषा पश्चंति जंग योग माइंड इज फुल्ली एब्जॉर्व इन गॉड एंड इज सेम डिसिप्लिन गॉड विद इन हार्ट दैट इज मेडिटेशन नॉट स्नोरिंग इम्पैक्ट But if you chant Hare Krishna, immediately you can join, immediately. Oh. Even the child will join. And this is right. And that is a command. Kalau dosa ni dehi rajan, asti jhika mahan guna, kita nai deva, Krishna sa mukta sangha paranga. That is a command led by Sukhdev Bhushan. That I have described so many faults of this age of Kali. But there is one very biggest gain. What is that? that? Simply by chanting Hare Krishna, one becomes free from all material knowledge. This is the special advantage of this age. Could it be called the true yoga of our time? Hmm. Yeah. It is bhakti yoga. 
Bhakti Vrata begins with two people chanting, Sabanam Kirtanam Vishnu. The more you chant and hear, you become purified. I think you leaders of your country, you should take this moment very seriously and take it for acceptance. It is not difficult. Chanting. You can chant in school, you can chant in college, you can chant in the factory, you can chant on the street. There is no special qualification required. But if we introduce this chanting, it will be benefit. Great. There is no loss, but there is great gain. Srila Prabhupada, you are aware that they advance the argument of mesmerization against chanting. That's good. That's good. If you can mesmerize, that is, he, he, uh, Dr. Judah has admitted, that you can mesmerize the drug addicted hippies and engage them in understanding Krishna is a great achievement. It's not mesmerization. Whatever it may be, Dr. Judah has admitted. So if mesmerization is for good, why not accept it? If it is for bad, then it is an doing good, why not accept it? Hmm? What do you think? I don't know how to react. I think I agree with you. If it is good, <laughs> everything good should be accepted. <laughs>